you tell us uh, who you are and what you do? Uh, yeah, I'm James Snell. Um, I am a contributor to Node. I'm also a, uh, uh, a engineering manager uh, for Near Farm. A concise uh, introduction. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've been involved in the in the Node project for a while. Yeah, uh, and, and you gave a, a talk yesterday, I think it was, uh, mm -hmm. about all the new features in the latest version of Node. Can you tell us uh, just kind of a quick overview of how Node has changed in the last year uh, from a technical perspective and where you see the project uh, going? Uh, yeah, so Node over the last year has been really interesting. We've, you know, if, if you look back 2015 or back where it was, you know, about right after the fork, right, we really started this process of really you know trying to address the community issues and get the contribution process you know, going over the past year what we've seen is that that process is just really smoothed out right you know a lot of the the issues that were there before um, have really been dealt with and uh, on the, the technical side of the project is just turning along right we really haven't had any real major any major hiccups we're getting the releases out there's a huge amount of activity I think we're doing something like an average of 90 pull requests per week, uh, which is phenomenal. But if you look at the open pull requests, there's only about 200 of them, right? So we're actually landing things, they're not stacking up, which shows that we're really making progress and moving forward. So. Yeah, it, it, it's really exciting uh, to see like all, all the new growth we have. We have, you know, HTTP two has landed. Mm -hmm. uh, modules is there, even if behind a flag. Yeah. Uh, you know, workers. Promise, you know, yeah. Workers, yeah. promises. You know, a, a lot of uh, really new things are coming to note. Yeah. Uh, after we had seen the API service be, you know, for the most part, stable and untouchable right, for right. a long time. Yeah. When I got when I first got involved, um, it was it was interesting. It was everything was locked. Don't touch anything. You know, and you know, I was having some conversations. Well, what if we added? And as soon as I said added, it was no, <laughs> don't do this. Uh, and we're at a, in a, in a process, you know, point in, in the process now where, you know, somebody comes up with a new idea. It's like, yeah, go work on that, right? And it, it really took a lot of effort. You know, like you know, you know, a lot of folks have noticed that I'm kind of liberal with my code reviews, right? You know, somebody will, will open something and I'm like, yeah, it looks good to me. You know, they're sort of like, well, there's there's bugs in here. There's things that need to be fixed. You know, what about those? I'm like, I trust you. You know, you know, I, other people they're reviewing. I tr I trust that these things are going to get dealt with. What I want to see is like this positive momentum of things coming in, and you know, ideas flowing, and you know, and, and new things being experimented with. We've got to a place right now where that's happening, right? You know, it's it's a lot of new ideas. Uh, you know, even the experimental stuff. It's like, let's just try it. Let's just see what happens. And you know, whether it actually ends up in core or not. Like there's, a, there's an effort right now to redesign the REPL. That's happening in a separate repository outside of, of the main, it's, it's, it's making progress. If it turns into something, great. If not, it's still great. It's still a good exercise to go through and I love seeing that kind of experimentation happen. So, yeah. And so you, just, uh, you mentioned uh, something interesting which I heard asked on the Enterprise and Open Source panel as well uh, earlier. Now you know you're getting more liberal with your code reviews, gain things mm -hmm. and experimenting. Uh, so I feel like there's probably enough data now you can look at this. You know, a lot of people are concerned, uh, and we're also concerned with the original open governance model of Node that you know mm -hmm. if you democratize it too much, that the quality <laughs> of the code base is going to go down. It seems we haven't seen that. Uh, no, so we what do you think seen that. keeps the quality of code up even as we're bringing in uh, more contributions? The passion of the contributors that are there. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, the, further, I'm going to say that this whole idea that if, if, you, if you open the doors and more people come in, that, that the code quality is going to go down. That's just, that's just crap. There, there is no basis in this. I mean, everywhere you look, you see that this, that, that having this diversity of opinion, this diversity of points of view and experience, and, and lots of different people, you know, bringing, bring, bring, bringing these ideas, makes things better, right? It, it, it improves things. Like uh, it, one of the code and learns, um, I think it was, uh, I think it was last year. A, 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 a commit had landed in Node about a week before that was not covered by tests and there was a bug in it, right? And then one of the tasks at the code and learn so, you know, was to increase code coverage on that particular area. And what ended up happening is that that code and learn task, the, this, this, somebody, this person who had never contributed to Node before, had actually never contributed to any open source project before added this test that uncovered a bug in Node. We fortunately hadn't shipped yet, but it was, you know, this brand new contributor found mm -hmm. this bug and we were able to fix it before I think, I think something shipped. And it was like, it was because we had opened the doors for brand new contributors and, you know, and, and it had gone out there that we were able to resolve this issue. So 
for me that, you know, it's, you know, there, there's something to this. And if you look at the actual, you know, we've improved code, code, improved code coverage, the number of tests are, you know, are, are, you know the quality of the tests are, 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 is improved. All of this is because we made it easier to contribute. You know, and yeah, some things will, you know, you know, you know, we've, we've had some issues, but you know, it's, it's natural process of the, uh, of the project, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's, it's good. Mm -hmm. and, and I've also noticed that, you know, that this acceleration of features, to me, it feels like it is kind of coinciding with the ev uh, accelerated evolution of the language itself. Oh, yeah. You know, when of course ES6 came out, that was a few years ago now. You know, we got a whole bunch of new features, but we've been adding new features every year. It also feels like the uh, on the browser level and at the actual JS engine level, the support for new features in the engines and in the language has been pretty closely matching. You know, the new features coming into Node. Do you think that's just yeah. a coincidence? No, uh, no, 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 no. That definitely not a coincidence. You know, it's when I remember when I when I was first getting involved with Node. It was around 2015. There was all these debates and arguments around promises. We're not going to do promises. We're not going to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of, a lot of the issues around that conversation were just because Node wasn't getting involved in the, in the larger conversation. And it was, you know, TC39, they don't care about us, the language doesn't care about us. But it was, they just, you know, Node, the Node folks weren't showing up. As soon as Node folks started showing up in the conversations, then it started opening up these possibilities, of, you know, these conversations, and hey, maybe we can do this, maybe we can do that. Uh, the URL parser is an example of this, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, adding the what WG URL parser was was extremely controversial when I first raised the idea. Then I just did it, and it, like, you know what? I'm not going to debate it. Here it is, and that one thing alone just opened up a huge number of possibilities for where you know you know for, for new types of collaboration now we have the text encoder and we're talking about you know what wg streams and you know there, there's you know it, it's a momentum but it was very deliberate it was not a coincidence it was something we had to decide that was this is what we're going to do so yeah yeah i'm really excited for these uh, features as well even just as well, mostly as a user these days uh, because, I, I, like you said, it opens up new possibilities. The first thing that mm -hmm. jumps to my mind is isomorphic apps. Oh, yeah. uh, do you see that the overlap between what browsers support uh, in terms of like APIs going from like uh, what WG and whatnot and Node uh, overlapping and continuing to overlap more and more? Like, do you see a oh, yeah. Yeah, convergence yeah. to an extent happening? Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, this whole idea. I mean, there's an argument that you know Node's not a browser, so it shouldn't act like it. it you know, it's it, it's kind of you know it's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I've always viewed it kind of like a Venn diagram, but you know, it was you know described to me, you know, Miles Borns described it a slightly different way that really clicked my head, made sense. It's more of a graph, right? You know, so mm -hmm. as things, you know, the, the, you know, you have more generalization at the leaves, or more specialization at the leaves, more generalization at the root, right? Mm -hmm. So as these common features or common requirements, as you move up the uh, up, up the graph, you know, you know, you have more common overlapping use cases, right? Um, you can specialize down in the, you know, down in the leaves, you know, so node needs better, you know, like more efficient memory management for very specific types of use cases um, that just don't exist in the browser, right? So you can specialize down there, but as you move up, you're, you, you, uh, you're abstracting away some of that detail and you, and you start seeing very common patterns, you know, on both. As we get those common patterns, that's where we start to see the overlap and you know what, maybe we can have the exact same APIs and specialize on some of the details, but they're the same APIs, mm -hmm. right? Um, it made a lot of sense. It's just, you know, it, it's not black or white. It's not, you know, one or the other. It's, you know, it, it's one ecosystem and one platform just expressed in multiple different ways. So, so my last question for you is, if you could wave a magic wand and get in and implement any new feature overnight and know that no one is working on right now, <laughs> what would it be? Uh, you know what? Um, Quick is looking really interesting. Um, it is a, a very efficient protocol and it's got some standardization to go, you know, some, some work there. But there were some really interesting characteristics uh, that could really improve overall networking performance within Node. And I think that if we can get that in and start experimenting with it and HP2 together, uh, the types of applications that people can build with Node will really, you know, get really, really interesting. Particularly like peer-to-peer -peer and you know some of these kind of things. It's going to be cool. So yeah, that'll be fun. 
right. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. James. Oh, it's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah.